Hello everyone, my name is Vincent Thiel and I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I've finished setting up this Sony 55-inch AF8, also known as the A8F in the United States, Bravia OLED television, and I'm going to go through the picture settings in the user menu, explain some key ones. So if we go down here from the home screen, click on settings, and go into the display submenu, click on picture, the default picture mode is standard which is out of the box and I'm going to use picture mode custom to explain many of the picture settings and if we go into advanced settings the brightness submenu dictates the contrast uh, of the television so brightness determines the light output if you actually low it, then the light output of the TV will drop. It's set to max by default. And contrast determines the digital white level, so you can actually increase it to 100, which would actually maybe clip some whiter than white levels, but if you actually drop it to low, then what you will do is to lose dynamic range. The default is 90, so I'll just set it back to 90. Gamma dictates how the input signal should be translated to the output on screen. So if you actually lower it, then the image will become darker. But if you actually increase it, then the image will become brighter, more suitable for viewing in a daytime environment. Black level just lets you set the video black. If you actually lower it too much, then you will be losing shadow detail. But if you boost it too high, then you'll be raising your black level unnecessarily because the data is just physically not there in the content itself. The default is 50, so let me just set it back to that. Black adjust is black stretching, and advanced contrast enhancer is a dynamic contrast function. Pick luminance, now this is unique on Sony OLEDs in that it actually caps the light ceiling, light output ceiling of the television. So if you actually set it to low, then the ceiling will be maybe around 100 nits. And if you set it to medium, the ceiling may be around 200 nits. And set it to high, it will just go as high as possible but it may also manipulate the gamma in between as well, so the default is a medium. And if we go to the next submenu, which is the color submenu, this color control here allows you to increase the saturation and luminance globally for all the colors. Hue rotates the tint of the secondary colors. Color temperature, this allows you to select the grayscale preset for this display and you can either choose expert one, expert two or cool which is far too blue, neutral, warm and then back to expert one again. Advanced color temperature, this allows you to adjust the two point white balance and also the 10 point white balance controls. I explained the two point white balance in the first instance. R gain stands for red gain, green gain, blue gain, red bias, green bias and blue bias. The gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image. So let's say when a professional calibrator like myself go into your home to calibrate your Sony television, we will be adjusting these controls mainly to try and attain a neutral D65 grayscale. And the gain controls affect the brighter portion of the image, whereas the bias controls mainly affect the darker portion of the image. Sony has also provided us with a 10 point white balance controls where the company is allowing us to individually adjust every 10% video stimulus interval. And you can just go from 1 to 10, which in theory should correspond to 10% to 100% video stimulus interval. But depending on your contrast and gamma settings, it may be misaligned. So again, experienced professional calibrators like myself, we will be able to determine at what level the adjustments will hit. And 
live color basically just generally just boosts the luminance of the colors and if we go to clarity this has to do with edge enhancement and reality creation and things like that so the sharpness control just adds edge enhancement and reality creation is sony's generic video processing engine that combines edge enhancement noise reduction and various other things Master in 4K, random noise reduction, digital noise reduction, these are basically either temporal or, well, spatial or temporal noise reduction. And smoke gradation is what Sony is calling their super bit mapping technology. So what this does is that it tries to mimic maybe 14-bit processing to try and smooth out any, say, in-source polarization or solarization to try and create a smoother gradients throughout the tones. And if we go into motion, the company's motion enhancing technology comes under the umbrella term of motion flow. And you can see that there are various presets here, custom, through cinema, standard, smooth, and off. And if we go into custom, there are two further options here, smoothness, which determines the amount of frame interpolation, and clearness, which determines the amount of black frame insertion. And I'll be testing this more in depth during the review period. And if we go down, right, let me just go back up again. I forgot to mention about film mode. And film mode actually determines how aggressive this TV should be in terms of processing interlaced film-based content. And the higher the film mode setting, the TV will also add in a dose of frame interpolation. and video options, you can manually force certain types of HDR mode. I think uh, you can switch it off or force HLG, which is hybrid log gamma, the broadcast friendly standard, HDR standard, or you can force HDR10, which is the open standard. I don't think this TV is updated with the Adobe Vision firmware yet. And then under color space, you can either let it do its own thing with auto, which is usually correct. It will just automatically detect the info frame of the incoming video signal and then select the correct color gamut to be applied. Or, you know, if you are so inclined, you can force a BT2020 UHD color gamut or Adobe RGB DCI BT709, which is the SDR high definition standard or just leave it at auto. And those are the picture settings in the user menu. And another thing that I actually want to show you is probably this expert panel settings. And as you may be well aware, OLED displays have a propensity to develop image retention or permanent screen burn. Now the risk is extremely low, especially if you watch a variety of content, but manufacturers have to implement various measures to try and mitigate the risk nonetheless. And under the expert panel settings, you can see pixel shift, which will just very, very subtly move the picture on screen by pixels. And a panel refresh function, which will manually force uh, compensation cycle and those are the settings in the user menu another thing that I probably should point out is that as always this Sony AF8 or AF OLED only comes with two full bandwidth HDMI ports and those are ports 2 and 3 and if you actually hook up, let's say, a Sony PS4 Pro or a Microsoft Xbox One X, which outputs at 4K at 60 Hz, you will need to hook them into one of these two ports because these are the only two HDMI ports that are compatible 
with 4K HDR video signal at higher frame rate, chroma or bit depth. And after you connect your source devices that require such high bandwidth to the TV, you still need to go into the user menu. I'll show you where it is. You'll need to go into external inputs, HDMI signal format, and then select enhanced format before your source device will recognize TV as HDMI 2.0B capable. Right? And that concludes my very short walkthrough of the picture settings on this Sony AF8 or AF OLED television. Now I'll be spending the next few weeks testing this display. So if you have any questions about this TV or if there's anything in particular that you want us to test, please leave some comments in the YouTube section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.